Well, hello. Welcome back again. Welcome to Einstein Helps with uh, Grade 10 Mathematics. This is the first lesson of Unit 2. This unit is about algebra and number theory or number skills. In this lesson, we will first look at the different kinds of numbers, most of them that you have learned already, and later we will learn about a new kind of numbers. Second, we want to look at the structure of numbers. In the first unit, we already looked at the value of the figures or digits we use, and also the value that they acquire when we look at the place value. Now we will look at how a number is built up of factors. We will look at prime numbers and composite numbers. And third, we will do prime factoring. That is, writing any whole number as the product of its prime factors. The first time you learned about numbers, you probably did not go to school yet. These were the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, and then perhaps up to 10. These counting numbers are now called the natural numbers. These are the kind of numbers we find in nature and all tribes and people groups have used such numbers for counting items. Perhaps it was soon after you went to kindergarten or the first grades that you heard about a zero and zero is actually quite a discovery. If you look at human history, you see that the first cultures did not really have a zero. In the movie Stand and Deliver, the teacher, Escalante, tells the Latino immigrant students, it was your ancestors, the Mayas, who first discovered the zero. The first recognition of the zero, however, may have happened in China where the decimal system was used already very early in the 14th century before Christ. In the 4th century, they used blank spaces in their numbers to indicate zero. So we added the zero to our numbers, and then we got what we now call the set of the whole numbers. In math, we often use this notation called the set notation. It is a set or specific group of numbers. The brackets that we use are called set brackets. Between these brackets, we have the elements of the set, in this case, numbers, separated by commas. Since there are infinite number of elements for this set, we will conclude the series with dot, dot, dot. We can also depict these sets as Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are ovals that show the boundary of the set and indicate some of the elements as points within the oval and labels beside them. John Venn introduced this idea in a publication in 1880. So we got a little bit older and then we learned about negative numbers. Often these were associated with temperatures above or below the freezing point if we used Celsius. Or we could use negative numbers for bank accounts in case our balance drops below zero and we are in debt. Sometimes it is also used for parking garages. If we take an elevator below ground, we can label those floors minus one, minus two, perhaps even down to minus three. We call these numbers integers. This is a bit confusing because the word integer means whole. A person of integrity can be trusted. He does not say one thing to one person and a different thing to another person. Notice that all the natural numbers are also whole numbers. 
and that all the whole numbers are also integers. The set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of whole numbers and also a subset of the set of integers. Sub means below. Submarine goes below the sea. We abbreviate the names of these sets by the capital letters N, W, I. But the next shell that we have to deal with in this lesson is the set of rational numbers. It is abbreviated Q. Why Q? Well, we use the letter R for the set of real numbers. More about that later in this unit. The letter Q then stands for the word quotient. Quotient refers to division or the outcome of a division. As we have seen in the unit on measurement, a division is similar to a ratio and similar to a fraction. 1 divided by 2 is 1 over 2. Actually, it says 1 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 2. So, 1 divided by 2 is very similar to the ratio 1 to 2 and is very similar to the fraction 1 over 2. A rational number can also be written as a decimal number. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. Rational numbers. What are they? A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. Like A over B. A and B should be integers. If one of them is negative, we preferably place it at the top. So, use it as numerator. And b cannot be 0. Why can b not be 0? Well, if you check on the calculator, you will see that if you try to divide a number by 0, it will give you an error message. But let me try to explain. If you do 6 divided by 2, or 6 over 2, the answer is 3. Why? because 3 times 2 equals 6. So, 0 divided by 2 must be 0, because 0 times 2 is equal to 0. What is 2 divided by 0? Well, let's say 2 divided by 0 equals x. So then we get the statement x times 0 equals 2. But there is no number for x that if you multiply it by 0, the answer would be 2, because multiplying by 0 always results in an answer of 0. So therefore, we cannot divide by 0. A rational number can also be written as a decimal. So, 1 over 4, or 1 quarter, is 0 0.25. And 3 eighths is 0 0.375, or 375 thousandth. What about 0 0.33333 repeating? We can also write this as 0 0.3 with a little dash on the 3, or 0 0.3 with a dot on the 3. Yes, this works too, because this is equivalent to one third. So also this is a rational number. Any time we have a repeating decimal, as we call it, then this is also a rational number. In a fraction, we have a numerator and a denominator. Let's first look at the bottom, denominator. The word denomination is used for the name of a kind of banknote or a type of church. So it refers to the kind of thing. Denominator actually means the namer, the thing that you call it, by what name you call it. So what is the denomination of that banknote? And what kind of church do you go to? Is it a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, a Reformed church, a Presbyterian church, a Roman Catholic church? 
Those are types of churches, we call them denominations. Then at the top we have a numerator. The word numero refers to number. So a numerator is like a counter. It answers the question how many. If we have the fraction 3 over 4, we are talking about quarters. What kind of things? Quarters. How many quarters do we have? We have three quarters. Next we will look at grouping and factoring. If we look at the back of calendars, we often see a summary of all the pictures used for the 12 months. So we can have three rows of four columns. Three times four is 12. Or four rows of three columns. Or we can have two rows and six columns. This is at the back of a booklet from Hong Kong. And in this series, there are 15 booklets. So 15 is three groups of five, or of course, five groups of three. This comes from the cover of a book that has 21 biographies. Biography means the description of somebody's life. Bios is life. Graphine refers to writing. And you can see in these pictures that they are grouped in seven by three. So you see that many numbers we can divide into groups. Why do some numbers divide easier into groups than others? Let's take a look at three examples. 21, 23, and 24. Which one divides easier into groups and why is it? Mathematics is the exploration and application of patterns in shapes and numbers. So here again, we looked at patterns of grouping into rows and columns. If we have 21 items, then outside the obvious one by 21, we only have one other option, three by seven. Why? Because the number 21 has only two factors, outside one and itself. You can divide it by three and you get seven, or you can divide it by seven and you get three. The number 23 has no other factors besides one and itself. We call such a number a prime number. The number 24 is not a prime number. It is a composite number. In fact, it has quite a few factors. Can you find them quickly? You can pause the video to give yourself some time to find all the factors for the number 24. Did you find them? Well, we will list also 1 and 24. Then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. It's the best to find the factors in pairs. In this way, it's harder to miss one of them. So 24 can be written as 1 by 24, 2 by 12, 3 by 8, and 4 times 6. Now we know how to break up a number into factors. We should go to prime factoring. How to break down a number, a composite number, into prime factors, or factors that are prime numbers. In the unit on measurement, we looked at the structure of numbers in the decimal system as the sum of its components. For example, if we have the number 1365, we could analyze it as 1 times 1000, 
where one is the digit value and a thousand is the place value of the one in this number. The three has a place value of hundreds and the six of ten and the five of one. And if we work this out and add them up again, we would indeed end up with the equivalent 1365. Now we will look at the structure of whole numbers as the product of its basic building blocks, that is, prime numbers. 21 can be written as 3 times 7. 3 and 7 are prime numbers because their only factors are 1 and themselves. 25 can be written as 5 times 5. 5 is a prime number, so it is broken down here into its prime factors. Let's approach this systematically. The set of prime numbers is a set of numbers like this. Set notation, set bracket, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, etc. So, when we do prime factoring, we follow this list from small to large. Until the number has been broken down to its prime factors. But remember, the same prime factor can be used more than once. Example. Let's focus on the number 420. Let's write 420 as the product of its prime factors. We start in the list with 2. Can we divide it by 2? Yes, we can, because it's an even number. The answer is 210. But, you see the last digit is still an even number, so that means it is an even number, so we can divide it by 2 again. The answer is now 105. 5 is not an even digit, and so we can no longer divide it by 2, otherwise we would get broken numbers. Can we divide it by 3? Well, add the digits. 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6. 6 can divide it by 3, so 105 can be divided by 3. The answer is 35. 3 plus 5 is 8. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is not a multiple of 3, so we can no longer divide it by 3. But the last digit is 5. If the last digit is 5 or 0, then it is divisible by 5. So, yes, we can divide it by 5. The answer is 7. Now, 7 is a prime number, so that means we don't have to try anything else anymore. We just divide it by 7, and the outcome is 1. As soon as we have reached the 1, we know that we are finished. So, 420 can now be written as 2 times 2, or 2 squared, times 3, times 5, times 7. We are done. We have now prime factored the number 420. That means we have written it as a product of prime numbers. Let's do one more example. The same number that we had earlier, 13. 165. We've looked at the structure of this number in terms of digit values and place values. Now we will consider the structure of this number as a product of prime numbers. So where the prime numbers are the building blocks that together make up this number. Can I divide it by 2? No, I cannot divide it by 2. It may be handy for you to list the first prime numbers so that you can check them off. Let's take a look at the next one, 3. Can I divide it by 3? 1 plus 3 is 4. 
plus 6 is 10, plus 5 is 15, and 15 is divisible by 3, so yes, I can divide it by 3. Or if you want, 15, 1 plus 5 is 6, and 6 is a multiple of 3, so yes, I can divide it by 3. If I divide this by 3, then notice 1365 is 1200 plus 150 plus 15. 1200 divided by 3 is 400. 150 divided by 3 is 50. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So the answer would be 455. Five plus five is ten, plus four is fourteen, one plus four is five, it's no longer divisible by three. Check the next one, five, yes, the last digit is zero or five, in this case five, so I can divide it by five, so that's what we do. Four hundred divided by five is eighty, and fifty-five divided by five is eleven, so totally it's a ninety-one, so this is ninety-one. The last digit is no longer 0 or 5, so we're done with 5. Can I divide it by 7? Yes, because 10 times 7 is 70, and there's a 21, and that's 3 times 7. So, yes, I can divide it by 7, and the answer would be 13. And, as you know, 13 is a prime number, and so I can now write divide by 13 equals 1. And so the answer to this question, 1365, can be written as 3 times 5 times 7 times 13. And now I am done. I have written 1365 as the product of prime numbers. Well, we have come to the end of the instruction for lesson 1 in algebra and number theory. So make sure you practice well and take your time and uh, before you do the assessments I would recommend that you watch this uh, video one more time to refresh your memory and to go over some things that perhaps you had forgotten. Good luck!